Hey, it's Evan. I'm in the Smoky Mountains. It's already day two of my trip. This is a strange way to start a hiking video, but it's the way I'm going to start it. The, the reason I'm here in the Smoky Mountains, sort of the goal of the trip, is to see today the old growth forest at the Albright Loop Trail. That'll be this morning. But before I do that, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how I got here and what happened yesterday on day one. So it was already the afternoon yesterday when I arrived at the Smoky Mountains National Park after driving about four and a half hours, five hours from Nashville. And my hike started at the Snake Den Ridge Trailhead. It had just stopped raining and it felt cold and damp. And I had a 3,000 foot climb to reach the junction with the Madron Bald Trail. And I kept climbing and went higher and higher until I reached the clouds or maybe it was just fog and here's what that looked like and what it sounded like. But it was only about two hours later that the sky started clearing. I found out I was pretty high by then. And that was the situation when I reached the top of my climb, which is where I first decided to talk to the camera, and here it is. Well, I'm at the windy and a little bit cold junction with the Madron Bald Trail. I'm going to turn right. I'm only 0.7 miles from making it all the way to the Appalachian Trail. So it's been a 3,000 foot climb to this point, four and a half miles. I think most of the trip for uh, the next few days is going to be downhill with an exception tomorrow, one exception. Uh, that's nice. So from that point it was about another mile and a half to reach campsite 29 where I'm at right now. And when I got here last night it was already getting dark. Not only getting dark, it was dark after just another 10 or 15 minutes. I scrambled to get set up, it was very cold, and by the time I had that done it was already dark completely and I decided to start the video this morning rather than last night in the dark. So that brings us up to date and uh, now let me show you a map. So one of the things I'm dealing with this morning here at Camp Site 29 and trying to get this video started is that over this little hump here there's a creek down there which is the water source for this campsite runs up the mountain but it's causing a little noise it interferes with the audio and I apologize for that bring you over here to my tarp and my map so to repeat just a bit this is where I parked yesterday at the Cosby uh, Front Country Campground which is closed for the season but the parking area is still open I hiked up the Snake Den Ridge Trail yesterday, reached the junction with the Madron Bald Trail, and then ended up here at Campsite 29. Today I'll be going around this direction to Campsite 34, and along the way the Albright, Loop, Albright Grove Loop Trail, which is where the old growth forest is. Then on the third day I'll make my way back out. I'm not going very far in this trip. I'm trying to take it easy on myself. It's only probably 18 miles around this loop. So I think it's like six and a half, six and a half in the balance tomorrow on my last day. Now I'm back on the trail. And here's my junction with the Albright Grove Loop Trail, which goes up that way. So as I said at the outset, I kind of plan to hike around the Albright Grove Loop Trail. I've been here before, but at another time of the year when the leaves were on the trees and you couldn't really see beyond the understory. But now without the leaves, I can see all the way to the top. So a little bit of background. Most of the park was logged just before becoming a park. Most of the trees were cut down and replanted. So you see a lot of, oh, they're still big, but they're not as big 
as the trees you can see in this one little area which was owned by a champion fiber company at the time that this area became a park but they hadn't done a lot of logging here so the old big trees still remain standing even older and even bigger now so the Albright Grove Loop Trail is about three quarters of a mile long it's the area in the park where you can see the highest concentration of bull growth forest there are other big old trees scattered around here and there but here in this area there are quite a few of them it's kind of hard to capture the scale of these trees but they're big Here's another big one. These are hemlock trees here that are still living. A lot of them in the park are dead, but not all of them. And some of them get treated with chemicals. If they do get treated, it lasts for about five years and they're marked with a little dot of spray paint that's color coded for the year. The hemlock trees are dying, of course, because of the woolly gelded beetle. I think it's what it's called, but it's a bug that kills the hemlock trees. Fir trees are the same way. Most of the fir trees in the Smokies are dead. And now the ash trees, too. The ash trees have a beetle a beetle type bug that is killing them. And uh, I had to pause my thought there because of a creek that I needed to cross. But now that I'm over, I don't think, according to the ranger that I talked to, that the ash trees are as big of a concern in the park as the hemlocks and the firs. Because the uh, ash trees, as I understand it, start to reproduce before they're killed off by the beetle. Also, the beetle isn't quite as invasive to the rest of the ecosystem, the one that kills the ash trees. The ash trees, though, don't stand as long when they're dead. They're, they become very brittle and they can blow down. I suppose that at some point people are going to have to learn what an ash tree looks like before they go camping. I had one in my backyard that broke off right halfway up the trunk, just snapped. And that's what ash trees do after they're uh, killed by these beetles. They become brittle. They become very expensive to have them cut down if they're in your yard because the tree companies don't like to get up in them. Almost done with the loop, which means mission accomplished for me. You're going to have to come here yourself if you're interested in seeing how spectacular it is. I think I'd recommend coming in the summer. I kind of like the views in the summer better than I like the views now in November. So next up on the hike is going to be Otter Creek. That's the same creek that I camped alongside last night and which caused me audio issues. But now all the way down the mountain the creek is a lot bigger and I think that there's a bridge that I'm going to use to cross over it next up is my junction with the Gabe's mountain trail in about two miles and then on to campsite 34 Campsite 34. I'm coming up on campsite 34, completely unexpected. First person I see on the trail is my old friend Scott Taylor. This is, uh, I can't this. we didn't plan this or anything. I Isn't that, start to call and ask you if you wanted to come. Isn't that strange? <laughs> How you doing, that Scott? Amazing. Say hello to my YouTube channel. Hey, Evan. <laughs> Evan's backpacking videos. Evan's backpacking videos. Y'all check him out. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that is really odd. I'm going to go way down here and set up away from Scott and then go back and talk to him. One thing I can say that makes a little bit less of a coincidence is that Scott and I both like to backpack in the Smoky Mountains. Okay, I'm set up. There's a creek down there. We'll get some water. And that's what it's looking like right now. I have the tarp set up just as a half of an A-frame to keep some of the wind down. But I want to be able to see out because it's going to be clear tonight and the stars should be real nice. There's hardly any moon. I'll tell a little story about this campsite. I was here a couple of years ago and I made a video about this trip but it's going way way back and I was right up here close to where I am now but I had a hammock. That tells you how long ago it was and I tied up between this tree and that tree over there and right after I got set up a bear came out of a tree right over here went down this way and <laughs> that kind of spooked me a little bit it was right before I was gonna eat dinner which I did and uh, the rest of the story is I couldn't sleep very well that night and the bear never came back now I'm taking my food bag and my gloves and my water bottles that are empty up the hill to eat dinner with Scott and get some water. See what he's been up to lately. So here's Scott's place here and he he made a fire which was nice of him and I think we're just gonna sit around here for a while and chat about some of our greatest hits oh, yeah. and then uh, we won't bore you all on YouTube with the details but you know we've had how many times have we been backpacking together many many times uh, yeah we've made a lot of videos together in Big South Fork you came to trail days when I was on the AT yeah. we've done a lot of Smoky Mountains hikes yeah cause we did we did it we didn't video that one did we the last time we came up oh we were here a year ago yeah yeah and I didn't video it I didn't either I kept looking for it last night and I thought I thought I videoed that but I we did a video where we went in canoes yeah. And went and camped on an island. Yeah, over on Morris Lake. I mean, I did a video and you did a video is what I meant. Yeah. But, uh, boy, isn't it, isn't it the weirdest coincidence? That is. That we ran into each other here and we haven't talked on the phone in a couple of weeks or months. It's been several months. Yeah, you've been backpacking with lots of other people and making yeah. videos. Wow. Strange. Okay, so say goodbye and I'm going to let you off the hook as far as video goes. All right. See you later. And we'll keep chatting. I've almost reached the end of the loop where I will find my car hopefully and it's going to be the end of the video too. Some big trees followed by a big coincidence. Nice seeing Scott. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for leaving a comment if you do. If you haven't subscribed to my channel I'd appreciate that. And that's a wrap.